At Bohemia Genome, we've been talking about the importance of genetic literacy for a number of years now. And in the time of the coronavirus pandemic, this has become particularly topical and stark. So in light of this, we have updated this um, talk and presentation, um, trying to uh, show how it ties in with a lot of these issues. Now, while mathematical literacy, you know, the whole concept of num numeracy has been um, very clear for, for a long, long time, for, for centuries even, you know, maths has been taught at school and the, the importance of this has, has been you know, well known by parents and teachers alike. Um, in more recent decades, digital literacy has really come to the fore, the importance of, you know, being able to, to use the internet, to use computers, um, tackle things online has, uh, has, has been taught and, and it's well known the importance of this. And in the same way as these, I, uh, we at Bohemia Genome strongly believe that genetic literacy in the 21st century um, is now as important as these other types of literacy. Now I say this because we need this genetic literacy to make decisions on many, many things. Um, health in particular, there's more and more um, diagnostic tests, treatments that you get from your doctor. Every time you you talk to your doctor, you need to make decisions based on your on your genetic background, on on mutations, on what's known as pharmacogenomics. Um, if you're starting as a fa starting a family, um, this information is really important. More and more um, genomic tests are have have come into the clinic and are, are publicly available, and that the, the um, the implications of this are, are very important to be able to understand. And even if you go to the shop, the shops, if you go to the supermarket, to the market and buy fruit and vegetables um, with fears about uh, GMO, genetic modification, we really need to, you know, shoppers need to really understand the implications of this, what this what this really means. Um, particularly topical as well with um, uh, CRISPR, with uh, genome editing, winning the Nobel Prize this year. These technologies are going to become increasingly uh, ubiquitous in in consumer consumer goods, shopping, and uh, and healthcare. And it's important that. Um, not just for, for, for individuals, not just for the, for the general public. Um, scientists need to do a much better job to, to convince the public and can convince skeptical politicians. This isn't just an issue with, uh, with politicians in, in North America or, or in Europe that may um, talk, you know, talk about conspiracy theories and, and be skeptical about lots of these scientific things. Even in China, um, a recent survey of, um, of the general public, uh, of, of consumers, found that only 23% uh, trusted scientists and of the people polled, about 14% believed that transgenic technology, that uh, GM food could potentially be a tool of the United States um, to commit bioterrorism in China. And so this really shows that um, across the world, um, scientists have, have done a, a very bad job of, of explaining what they do um, and uh, need to do a lot better. And, and this has become extremely important. You know, people were worried about, you know, genetically modified food. This was a, this was a you know, a, 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 Food security is extremely important. This was definitely an important issue. But in 2020, everything is about the pandemic. And um, it, P, the WHO has, has called this an infodemic. Uh, there has been an explosion in conspiracy theories, uh, mistrust of governments, mistrust of science, mistrust of the various um, technologies and, and data coming from this. And it's very important to really throw a light in this and, and get people's trust back through through education and just through being transparent about these things. People, uh, governments may be not being so clear early on in the pandemic has really led to this kind of information vacuum and that conspiracy theories have filled. 
and um, the 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 dangers of uh, the anti-vax movement, um, skepticism against vaccines is is very well known. We know that this is going to be the you know the biggest tool to 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 eventually bring this pandemic to an end. Um, it's been an issue with measles and and many other um, diseases. The the loss of trust in vaccines has, has has had consequences. Children have died as a result. But whereas there's been a lot of focus on anti-vax, there's been a lot less discussion about the dangers of anti-DX, anti-diagnostics. And in a pandemic where we currently do not have a vaccine, the actual technology that that, that works, that, that is keeping things in check is, is actually um, good quality diagnostic testing. Um, this is, uh, this is, coupled with um, with tracing systems is one of the key key interventions that we can make to to bring the bring the and, and control the epidemic um, control the pandemic and so undermining this has real world consequences has serious consequences um, that lead to the, the pandemic spreading getting worse and people die as a result um, a lot of this ties in with geopolitics. People, um, journalists, um, politicians from certain countries are skeptical about tests from certain countries. Um, and in a way, you know, when there hasn't been transparency, when you don't know how things are working, then then these fears are, are, are quite um, are, are quite understandable. But a lot of this as well is due to the fact that the, the people concerned about this do not have a scientific background, do not have any scientific training. You may be a very good journalist in, say, financial reporting, in, in um, you can be a, a, a very good investigative journalist in some ways, but if you do not understand basic science, then this is, this is problematic. Um, even uh, this week, um, the US government has pushed people in Nevada not to use donated tests from that have come from the United Arab Emirates. And this has real world consequences. When there are huge backlogs, people are not getting tested and people are dying as a result. So you have to really, if there are concerns, you need to take these into consideration with what is more important, really, these geopolitical risks or the pandemic getting worse and people dying. This is a very important question. And in Hong Kong, where Bohemia Genome is based, um, this has been a big issue with the government uh, screening program and on social media in Hong Kong, um, infographics like this being passed, saying that the, the, the testing program is basically a genomic surveillance program, that DNA is being taken across the border and um, people should not take the, the, the COVID testing as a result. And activists and politicians and local media has reported this essentially as a fact, but without any evidence and without saying what this program does. And it's interesting that if you have very basic scientific training, um, this doesn't qu quite make sense because the diagnostic testing program utilizes a technology called PCR. Polymerase, polymerase chain reaction that only amplifies the D, the RNA of the virus. It doesn't even amplify DNA. Um, and it's essentially a block of metal that heats up and cools down. Essentially, the technology is very similar to a waffle maker. And people are not scared of waffle makers. If you if you explain the the if you explain this to people, if they're talking about DNA programs, what is, can anybody explain what is happening with the DNA? Or is this just fear of the word DNA? If you put the word, if you, and this is, this is genetic literacy. This is, if you understand the basics of this issue, then things get a lot less scary. If you know that the output of a PCR machine is effectively a graph like this, then is this really a security risk? Um, can anybody explain where the back doors in this technology and the security risks are? Or is this just fear mongering? This is, these are all things that we need to discuss. 
that we need to, uh, to, to teach and explain. And the scientists as well need to do a much better job to let people in, come and see these things, explain these things. Um, it's, the, it's the high security of these labs. It's the kind of closed um, lack of responses from, 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 from governments, from the testing companies that, that leads to this mistrust. So everybody needs to do a better job to, to, to throw light in this. And then people will realize that, yes, we don't need to be scared of toasters. We don't need to be scared of waffle irons. Um, but it's been very hard to do this. You know, people have got interested in this issue because of the pandemic, you know, in recent months. But we need to, this needs to be uh, high profile. This needs to be taught 24 seven, not just when times get tough. It's because we didn't teach this um, previously that it's such an issue now. So um, Bahini Genome, we, we came about to try and um, try and get these issues discussed. Um, and and make people care and and in Hong, and understand this issue in in Hong Kong, a fast paced place that's normally much more focused on financial services, making money, and the whole point of genomics wasn't really of interest. And the way that we decided to do this was looking at the at Hong Kong's emblem. We realised this could be a very interesting thing to get people in Hong Kong interested in. So Hong Kong. The emblem is the is the bahinia flower, the Hong Kong bahinia, an endemic plant, very beautiful. It grows everywhere, flowers most of the year. And it was chosen to go on Hong Kong's flag, Hong Kong's money, Hong Kong's stamps and coins, for example, as the emblem. It re represents something about Hong Kong, but people know very little about it. And the most interesting thing is when you really look at it, you realize it should not exist. It's a sterile hybrid that was discovered um, in the 1880s. Every single one is a clone, is a, is a cutting taken from this specimen collected uh, 140 years ago almost that, that shouldn't, be, it shouldn't really exist. Um, it shouldn't still be here and we really do not know the, uh, the background of this, where, where it came from. Um, even in 1903, the government, the Botanical and Forestation Department were asking questions about um, all efforts to identify this have failed. It, it, you know, the origin is mysterious. And so we thought this is a great, it's a great use case for genomics. And it's a, and it's a great thing that will bring to light a, a mystery about Hong Kong. So we crowdfunded um, a genome project. We, we did everything made in Hong Kong. Uh, funded in Hong Kong, sequenced in Hong Kong, and using the Hong Kong people to analyze and 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 do this project. So we so we did a crowdfunder, paid for gene catalogs of the likely parents, um, and we did a lot of outreach. We went on CNN, we went on uh, BBC Earth, South China Morning Post. We even did TED talks. Um, you can watch this TED talk on on YouTube. And um, this really explains the, the, the rationale in 97 of, of the importance of, you know, the need to build people's genetic literacy, which has really come true in 2020. Um, we went out to schools, we did outreach um, with 11, 12 year olds, with uh, senior students um, about to go to university, even seven year olds. Um, and the kids were really interested, really, they'd, they'd been starved of this kind of information that, that you know, the grown-ups have not really been interested in this. This is something that kids would like to do. Kids understand PCR, kids understand these things a lot better than the people going on TV and uh, making a kind of crazy comments that they sort of, that, that the kids will roll their eyes at. Um, we also wanted to build up the expertise in this area um we made all of the data public and there were online tools that 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 uh, university students even high school students can teach themselves using supercomputers for free to um to, to assemble assemble genomes to to teach themselves genomics including this tool dna subway um we worked with uh master students at the chinese university of hong kong who then basically used all of this data and and figured out the parents, figured out the the, the origins of this interesting flower, and um, we did this whole thing without a paying a penny of, of kind of government money, also throwing lights on on the cost and 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 how this whole thing works. 
Um, we're not the only people working in this area. Uh, DIY Bio Hong Kong have done um, have uh, set up a biohacking lab, and they're really interested in in from a biodiversity perspective, um, studying the DNA of all of our amazing uh, wildlife in Hong Kong. And so, on top of education. Um, the thing that really needs to be got across in 2020 is scientists need to need to be more they need to be more transparent they need to let people see how these things work they need to be more approachable i know scientists are busy but and and they're even more busy fighting a pandemic but at the same time they need to be approachable they need to rebut crazy things that are being said on the internet by your crazy uncle on facebook and on on tv and in the newspapers and on top of communication, we need to be more vocal. We need to like, stick up and, and find our voice as well. So that was basically the, uh, th that is the lesson of 2020. And um, as we've always said from this project, we need to really embrace our emblems as well, because they really teach us something about ourselves. So uh, thank you for your time and uh, stay safe.